Hello everyone, today I want to talk to you about using trends in your handmade shop. Not just what the 2022 trends are, but how you can understand them and especially how you can use them in all sorts of ways to increase sales in your shop this year. Now in this video, I'm not going to talk about how to find and research trends because I already have a video about this that I will link to down below. I also have a workbook to help you do your own trends research when coming up with new products or new collections. So make sure that you download it below as well. Today, I'll be talking about the 2022 trends and how you can actually use those trends to improve your handmade business this year. One of the trends report that I will be talking about today is the Etsy trends report, because even if you don't sell on Etsy, this data is very valuable for you. The trends in the report are relevant to any handmade business, whether you sell on Etsy or not. Ready? Let's dive in. Bonjour, my name is Deb and I'm the founder of Tizit.co, a membership community for makers and handmade shop owners just like your fabulous self. You can learn more about our community, Tizit HQ, via the link below this video. But for now, let's jump straight into today's conversation, the 2022 handmade business trends and how to use them to increase your sales. I have broken the trends for 2022 down into subcategories. And the first one we're going to discuss is color because that is something we just have <laughs> to talk about. I have three points I want to talk to you about for color trends. The first one is Pantone. Every year, Pantone announces their color of the year. When I say announce, I mean that Pantone doesn't forecast that this color will work. They essentially announce it. And then people start using this color because Pantone <laughs> sets the trend. They are a really strong influencer in the color world, probably the most influential company in the world when it comes to color. And so when they announce that the color of the year is this, you can expect that big brands, big fashion designers, and big retailers will use that color or variation of that color in their product this year. So it's very important to know what it is because as we start seeing it more and more, customers will get used to it and then will want to start buying products that have that coloring too. So let me show you quickly what this year's trending color is. It's called Very Peri and it's essentially like a violet color. Now take a look at the color and think about if it will work for your brand. If it's completely out of brand for you, that's fine. But if it's something that could work for your brand or some of your products, even if you don't really like that color yourself, consider using it. Next, let's take a look at Etsy's trend report. Even if you're not selling on Etsy, as I was saying before, I'm going to be mentioning this report a fair bit in this video, simply because it's a handmade industry report that is relevant for you, whether you sell on Etsy or not. This is a great report that shows what colors people were looking to purchase from smaller shops in a variety of categories, what handmade products they were actually looking for, what colors and the trends in specific industries, Etsy also announces a color of the year and they have named Emerald as this year's trending color. Now, the difference between Etsy's approach and Pantone's approach is that Pantone sets the tone. They say, we want purple and people go design purple things. <laughs> what Etsy does is look at the data and they determine that Emerald has been searched for more on their platform. So they forecast that it will keep being searched for and be a big color for 2022. So it's more based on the data that they already see. So Etsy's color trend is very important because it's driven from customer data. People actually searching for Emerald increased 67% in 21 on Etsy. And so they expect this to continue. When looking at trending colors, you also want to think about what colors are going to complement those main trending ones because obviously it's not like everything this year is going to be either very peri or emerald green, right? What I mean by this is that you not only want to be open to using those trending colors, but also consider what the trends in terms of color palettes are. And when it comes to palettes, I like to go to the decor niche. So for example, go to paint company websites like Dulux or Benjamin Moore and look at what they're forecasting, the trends and the color palettes. Let's take a look together at trending color palettes on Dulux. In 2022, Dulux has three main trending palettes, not just one. This Flourish palette, for example, 
is a trending palette that will complement a color like emerald green really well. You can see the colors look rich, earthy, deep and cozy, dark tones of blues, reds and golds. The second palette is different. They call it Restore and it's a bit more toned down and we see more neutral colors in earthy, natural and light tones. This gives you a more muted, subtle option if that is a better match for your brand and your products. And finally, the last one is the Wonder palette. And we can see already the influence of the Very Peri color from Pantone in there. This palette is more poppy and joyful. It's still toned down, but it's a lot more colorful than the other ones. And so if that's where your brand feels more comfortable, then you can focus on this palette. Interestingly, in the Etsy Trends report, it showed that searches for pastel room decor increased 2,600% last year. So showing this palette as a trending option to use makes sense. So as you can see, each of these palettes is quite different from the others, but they are all trending this year and this gives you more options to choose what will work best with your brand than focusing exclusively on emerald green or very peri. Next, let's talk about societal and overarching trends as in trends occurring across all niches and industries, fashion, decor, jewelry, you name it. The two that I want to highlight today that are in the Etsy report under cross category trends are abstract shapes and 90s and Y2K nostalgia. Let's start with abstract shapes. Etsy tells us that this year's trending forms take inspiration from ancient influences like arches and pyramids and evolve the rounded edges, squiggles and scalloped shapes that have become so popular recently. They cite a 177% year-on-year increase in searches on Etsy for squiggles, so it's definitely an up-and-coming thing. The next overarching trend we are seeing across all niches and industries is Y2K nostalgia, which stands for the year 2000 and the 90s, as in the decade. Now, <laughs> I have to admit, when I saw that the 90s and Y2K were the nostalgia trend, it was a bit of a shock to my system because those are my decades, like this is aimed at me. <laughs> I mean, I got gray hair fairly early in my 20s, I'm having a kid, but you know, none of those ever made me feel as old as when I saw that the 90s were being called out as the nostalgia trend. Ouch. <laughs> I had a bit of a moment of, no wait, the 90s are not nostalgia, I'm too young for that. I'm sure any of you on the older end of the millennials can relate. Guys, we're now a nostalgia trend. Okay, now let's talk about category trends and insights. When it comes to trends, there are the overarching trends that we just talked about, and then there are some trends that are going to be more specific to your specific niche that you need to be aware of. In Etsy's uh, trend report this year, they have a section called Category Insights that gives insight into trends in specific sales categories. So for example, Home and Living talks about trends like versatility, novel shapes, and natural textures, Marble seems to be having a moment. Pastels are mentioned here as well, which makes sense. We talked about them already uh, in, the, in the coloring trends. In clothing, they mentioned things like 90s inspired velvet, bucket hat, sweater vest, which again makes sense because that was an overarching theme as well, the 90s. And if you're in the jewelry niche, you will see that statement pieces and brooches, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, are having a comeback. So you can see that looking in your specific niche is important as you'll gain more specifics on trends and how those trends are manifesting in your specific market. I actually would highly recommend that you do extra research within your niche. So for example, if you're in the wedding industry, go and get some wedding magazines, get on some wedding websites and check out their blogs and see what their trends are and what they're forecasting for weddings in 2022. If you sell home decor, go to YouTube and find some big interior design influences. What are they talking about? What are they forecasting? The same goes for any industry you might be in. Go out there and use print websites and blogs and social media influences to get a feel for specific trends. You also will want to look at the trends in attitudes and behavior. It will help you connect with your customers and make the sale because you understand what they are going through. Here are some of the latest trends in this area. The first is wellness and self-care. There is a fair amount of research out there uh, which shows that the pandemic 
has definitely changed how people think about their life and what they want from it. There is definitely a big push for self-care, wellness, mental health, and burnout prevention. So if your products in any way can help with that, I would definitely use that as a way of positioning them. The next trend is pursuit of purpose. People want to do things that are meaningful and they want products that are meaningful. They prefer to shop for things that have meaning to them in one way or another. Another up and coming trend we are seeing is imperfect curation. People are a bit tired of everything being perfect and so there's actually this trend now of things like pictures with no filter, people with no makeup, shocking, people with no makeup. Can you imagine? <laughs> essentially showing up a little bit more raw and natural because people are just a bit too aware of how overly curated things have been in the past. Now, that's not to say that there aren't also some crazy filters on like Instagram and TikTok, but they are so obviously filters. People looking at them are aware that these are filters. And overall, there is definitely a growing appreciation for imperfect curation. So if that's something that would work for your brand, it's definitely something to consider tapping into. I also want to talk about social commerce and video and the fact that they are both going strong. In social commerce, we are seeing a trend where platforms like Instagram and Pinterest are making a big push towards e-commerce on their platform. This means that people stay on the platform to buy or to discover products. They shop and check out on the platform. So it's definitely something that you want to start doing, whether you're on Instagram or on Pinterest. You want to be at the forefront of that trend, not catching up when everyone's already using these features, you know, two years from now. Videos continue to grow in popularity pretty much everywhere. <laughs> um, Etsy at the time I'm recording this is even testing a video option called Etsy Explore where you can create and upload video posts for your shop's homepage on the Etsy shopping app. So it's obvious when you see these trends that social commerce and video aren't going anywhere and that the two are more intertwined than ever. So as you can see, it's really valuable for you to know how to use trends to improve your shop and increase sales. Now I've given you some tips through this video as we were looking at different trends, but I want to summarize them here so you can see the wide variety of ways that you can actually use trends for your business. If I had to sum up what you can do with trends, I would say that trends can be used to get product ideas on many different levels, including uh, new products, new collections, a new category of items that you could add to your shop, new product variations and new color options, all without necessarily reinventing the wheel. Think about it. You probably already have some products that you can offer in a pastel or an emerald or another trendy color from those palettes and colors that we've talked about. And so it's not a new product per se, but it's a new offering in terms of the yarn color that you offer, the paper color that you offer, the clay color that you use for your jewelry, etc. But don't stop there. I think that unfortunately using trends for new product creation is often where most people stop, but there's so much more that you can use trends for. Use trends for updating your shop, website graphics, and photo stylings. If you are using lifestyle images or mockups in your product listings, for example, make sure the mockups and the props reflect the current trends. You also want the current trends reflected in the banner on your website or on your Etsy store. And on social media, you will obviously be sharing your own products photos, but most of you are probably also using lifestyle or stock images. Make sure that those reflect the current trends, the current colors, and different shapes that people like to see so that your feeds and your social media posts look relevant and appealing. Trends are also helpful to understand which products you can shine more light on this year. So if you have some products that are aligned with the trends that we've just talked about, you might want to push them a little more than some other products in your shop, either organically on social media and with like your email list or by actually putting money behind them with paid ads. And finally, trends are great for content creation and copywriting. For content creation, it's really all about video. You need to be diving into this if you haven't yet. Video is becoming more and more and more prominent on everything from websites and blogs to social media. They all want us to do more video. So that's 
definitely the number one content trend you'll want to keep top of mind. For copywriting, it's really about your product listings, descriptions, and your captions on social media which breaks down to how you position your products and the benefits of your products uh, and what they offer. So for example, if your products are relevant to wellness or mental health, then definitely position them as such and make sure that you talk about this in your listing. When writing captions for social, knowing the overarching trend is going to help you come up with content that's going to connect with people a lot more on social media. So for example, if you use funny memes as part of your social media content strategy, maybe those memes can be about fun throwback topics from the 90s because you know that is what people are into this year, the now famous nostalgia decade. Using trends results in better marketing. It's really that simple. The next thing you are going to want to do is research trends for your specific niche. As I said before, I have a video that tells you how to do exactly that. It's showing on your screen somewhere right now. So click on it to go and watch it. I'll also add more helpful links below this video, including the free handmade shop trends workbook that you will want to download. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check the links below and until next time, au revoir.